I, 38 male, was married to my wife, 36 female, for six years. My wife and I were old friends before we started dating. She was a close friend of my immediate younger sister, so I knew her right from when she was a teenager. It wasn't until I graduated from college that something happened, and it brought the two of us closer, and from there, we fell in love. Since we already knew each other so well, our friendship bloomed, and we ended up dating and marrying after one year. Before my wife and I married, we agreed to only have kids once we were ready. She was the one who proposed it, and initially, I thought it would be only for the first two to four years of our marriage. I loved children, and I thought she said that because she wanted us to spend more time together or get better paying jobs that would put things in place before the kids arrived. Fast forward to five years after we married. I told my wife that I was ready for us to have children, but she kept coming up with multiple excuses that became annoying. Either she would say something about going for medical checkups to be sure her ovaries are in good shape, or we could just get a dog instead of having a child. Her excuses kept coming for almost a year, and because we were always fighting and arguing, we started to get distant from each other. It's not like I intentionally got distant. She was the one that started it. She refused to make my meals, do my laundry, or even sleep on our bed with me. And seeing all of this made me matter. I would not have been so worried about having children if it were left for me alone. I was only concerned that her biological clock was ticking, and she wasn't saying anything about having kids. Even before we married, I had always imagined having at least one child with her and how we'd be a big happy family, but my wife was trying to frustrate that reality. When our arguments and fights continued to the extent that I couldn't take it anymore, we were forced to sit and talk with a marriage counselor. Our marriage was slowly falling apart, and it was the exact opposite of what I had in mind for us. All those years of being married, I thought my wife and I were on the same page, but during one of our marriage counseling, I found out we weren't. In my presence, my wife told the counselor that she hated babies and couldn't even imagine having one. Also, she said she was very concerned about her body and wasn't ready to ruin her shape for a child or pause her life to care for a child. When I heard that, I felt so betrayed because she never mentioned it while we were dating, and she didn't say a thing about that, even on the days we kept arguing about it. I didn't know what to do or say, so I left the session to clear my head. It was painful to discover that my wife played on my intelligence, despite knowing how much I loved children. I was so mad at her when we got home that we did not speak for almost two weeks, and she wasn't even bothered. Around that time, she would come home late at night and go to bed. The following day, she would leave so early for work. I tried as much as possible to not let everything weigh me down, but I couldn't. It really affected me. I imagined my whole life without a child because my wife cared so much about her body. The most painful part was, even when we had this agreement before we married, she never mentioned anything about not liking babies or not wanting to pause her life to raise kids. If she had told me, I wouldn't have married her because we had different opposing values. There's no way I would have accepted to marry a woman who hated babies and didn't want one when I loved babies and wanted at least two children. Throughout the time my wife and I were not talking to each other, she never showed concern for me, even for one day. Instead, she would come home looking cheerful and happy, then go to bed. I had to make my meals and care for the house some days. There were also nights my wife did not sleep at home. On those nights, she would text me late at night and say she was sleeping over at one of her girlfriend's places. I don't know which one hurt more between finding out that my wife would never be a mother or her sleeping out and spending time with her friends while neglecting me. Months after my last counseling session, our marriage got worse. Our arguments started again, but it got worse this time. My wife became something else, and any time we fought, she would say I could go ahead and divorce her if I didn't want us to be married anymore. Every time she said this, it broke my heart because I thought it'd be better to fix things instead of divorcing. I didn't understand why she kept saying that until I made a shocking discovery. One day, I received a call from my bank about strange charges on my account. When I checked it out, I saw that the charges were going into an apartment complex I had no idea about. I told the bank I had no idea about the apartment and tried to get them to charge back. After talking to the bank people, I decided to go and check out the apartment myself since it was in the same town I lived in. 
It didn't make sense for someone to charge my account because I was careful not to leave any of my bank or card details online. After driving for a while, I successfully located the apartment and decided to go to the apartment to see who was using my information to pay rent. When I knocked on the door, a young man in his early or mid-twenties came out. When he opened the door, my eyes caught a glimpse of my wife's picture hanging directly on the other side of the wall. I was so confused, and the guy started talking before I could ask the questions in my head. He said he knew I was my wife's husband because she was his sugar mummy. Immediately I heard that, I had goosebumps on my skin, and my lower stomach churned. He said my wife rented the apartment for him, and I had to keep my mouth shut, or he would steal her completely from me. Talk about audacity. I couldn't even confront him like I had in mind, but I had a better idea. I was so mad at his audacity, so I began searching for his landlord and found him the next day. I reported everything to his landlord, and several days later, he was thrown out of the house. As for my wife, after I found out about her AP, I didn't even say anything because there was nothing to talk about. I began to reconnect the dots and realized my wife had been cheating on me for a very long time, but I was too blinded to see that. My wife caused me the most pain, so I couldn't let her go scot-free. I filed a report to the police, and my wife was arrested for identity theft and eventually charged. We also divorced because I realized we were like water and oil, and she no longer had a place in my life. I now understand why she kept saying I could divorce her if I wanted. It was because she had someone else in her life and was using my money to pay his rent. This happened to me a very long time ago, and as I share this, I have a beautiful three-year-old daughter, and I'm married to a beautiful younger woman. After things ended with my wife, I was down for a year plus, but I realized that I was living in the past instead of the present, so I decided to build the kind of life I wanted. I have never been so relieved and happier. OP, I'm happy to hear that you have moved on and have finally gotten what you wanted. Your wife played you, but she lost it all in the end. She didn't tell you from your dating days that she didn't like children because she knew you would leave her. She was a very selfish person, and she got what she deserved. You were smart to turn your focus from the past to the future. I hope you enjoy your new marriage. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Now let's move on to the next story of the day. My wife and I used to be best friends before we married. We both met in college, but we became close friends about three years after we left college. My wife was going through a very tough season when our friendship started. She had recently lost her father to cancer, and around the same time, she caught her best friend with her fiancé. I can't explain how we got so close, but I remember we started talking one day and never stopped. For two years, we were best friends and told each other stuff. I was always happy to have her around because I loved her aura. She was always so energetic, and her laughter was heart-melting. Aside from this, my wife and I were very much alike. We had similar passions, loved the same sports, and had similar hobbies. It was almost like we were born to be with each other. As time passed, I realized I had fallen in love with my wife, so I boldly asked her out, and she said yes. We ended up dating for 10 months, and we married. Being married to my wife was fun initially, because we were always eager to explore and try new things together. She has a very open mind and would jump on any idea I had. We didn't have any kids yet, but we made a solid plan to have kids after three years. While my wife worked as a secretary in a big pet store, I was a mechanic and worked in a car brand company. We were both actively planning for our future and a particular vision from when we dated. While we were dating, my wife and I agreed to learn at least three different languages before we grew old, and the first language on our list was French. We could have simply downloaded a language app, learned on YouTube, or taken an online language class. But my wife insisted that we travel to France to learn the language, feel the culture, and be in a class where a native French speaker would teach us. It sounded like a great idea, and since we love to explore, we started saving towards it. For two years, we put money aside every month for our France trip, and when we believed it was enough, we made our trip. It was our first time being in France, so you could imagine we were like children who had been to Disneyland for the first time. We loved everything we saw, and being around people who spoke French constantly motivated us to be serious about learning the language. 
We started classes the same week since we had already checked out the school we wanted to enroll in before traveling to France. We were in a class of about 15 people who also wanted to learn the language, and it was so much fun. Our class was only meant to be for three months. My wife believed three months of learning directly from a French native would help us learn the basics of the language and speak it, and she was right. Living in an environment of majorly French speakers helped too. For the three months we lived in France, we had so much fun and enjoyed our stay there. We also had the opportunity to relate and mix up with other people and made a couple of friends. My wife was a very social butterfly, and she made friends like it was nothing. She even had more friends in our class than I did, and I didn't mind. I knew it was her personality and trying to find more people to practice the language with. Well, I was wrong. My wife had been involved with something way higher than trying to practice the language with her new friends. Towards the end of our class, it was mandatory for everyone to take an examination, and we had successfully entered that phase. One day, while my wife and I were in our short lead apartment preparing for our exams that afternoon, her phone buzzed. She had left her phone on one of her textbooks and went into the room to sort out what she'd wear later. When I looked at her phone screen, I saw that the message was written in French, and I was impressed that my wife had reached the extent of getting messages in French. So, to test my French reading skills, I read the message to see if I could understand it, and that worked to a level. I couldn't understand the whole message because they were words that confused me. Meanwhile, I had understood something in the message that looked suspicious, so to be sure of what I had read, I used a language translator and was perplexed at what I read. Through translating the messages into English, I discovered that my wife was having an affair with one of her classmates. He had been her seat partner a couple of times, and they got along well. Not just that, they were also planning to cheat in the exam and also cheat on me afterward. By that, I mean sleep together. I was so mad, and I felt betrayed. I could not even believe that my wife was having an affair with someone she barely knew for three months, and she chose to destroy our marriage and the memories and sabotage every plan we made for our future. After I got a grip on myself, I snapped the message with my phone, and immediately after I did that, my wife walked into the living room. I tried to control my emotions like most men said they did on this channel, but I couldn't. It was eating me up inside, and before I knew it, I confronted her and yelled at her. She tried to lie that there was nothing going on between them, and that maybe I had misinterpreted the message, so I showed her the English translation, and she kept quiet. After staying silent for a few minutes, she said she could explain, and was only trying to explore and have fun. I nearly exploded when she said that, but I had to stay calm and walk out of her. Immediately I left the house, I went straight to her school, and I showed the text message to the person I knew was in charge. When the text message reached the right people, all the previous exams my wife and her affair partner had written were automatically cancelled. And since we had a couple more papers left before I returned to our country, I had to stay with one of the new male friends I made there till I wrote my last paper. After my last paper, I returned home before my wife. I avoided her the whole time we were in France, and I didn't take any of her calls or listen to the numerous voicemails she sent. When she returned home, she had met all her things on the front porch. Even at that, she still tried to beg me, and she claimed she and her AP had not done anything serious except kisses. At that point, I didn't care if they had done anything serious. Her intentions were all that mattered. We eventually divorced, but before we went our separate ways, my results came out, and I aced it. As for my wife and her affair partner, they were told they could retake the class if they wanted, but that would be at the expense of another fee. She couldn't take another class because it took us two years to collaboratively gather that money and pay for our accommodation. It still hurts when I remember how we were so in love with each other, our plans and the kind of life we were building, but it's all for the best. For me, being single is better than being with a woman who jumps on any man she gets close to. I know I have moved on, but it will take a long time to trust a woman or date one. OP, I know how you feel. Yes, it hurts to make future plans with someone, and they mess things up in the end. It's crazy how your wife could cheat on you, and her reason for doing that was exploring and having fun. Whatever happened to hiking mountains for fun? 
Anyways, this was meant to happen sooner or later, but it's good that you're over and done with this. I'm sure you will find someone else, but take all the time you need. Take care. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.